Hello and welcome to the top 10 mods of Fallout 4 for September and October 2023. Look, I had September's video all planned out, but I ended up having a very busy month, partly because of this little gremlin I found here and is currently purring right by the microphone. Maybe you'll hear her, she's... she does not leave my lap, ever. So yeah, I'm gonna combine the past couple months. Anyway, as usual, it's a mix of the highest rated mods and some of my personal favourites. They're also in no particular order, Although yeah, I'm going to start with the 5 September mods, so uh, let's begin. Can you... Can you not get right by my microphone? Thank you. So here we have two mods that go hand in hand so well that I could not put them together. The cookable grenade mod lets you hold the grenade in your hand as the timer goes down. This way you can time the throw to detonate with a shorter fuse preventing enemies from escaping the blast. Of course, the downside to this is that if you hold the grenade for too long, it'll explode in your hand, which is why I feature the next mod, Grenade Timer Overhaul, which increases the detonation time for all explosives, so you actually have a chance to cook the grenade without immediately dying. I found that the vast majority of third-person animation mods are focused on being tactical, like you're playing a Tom Clancy game or something. And while they look good, it's never really been my kind of thing for Fallout. But this cautious third-person animation mod is something I prefer way more. It basically gives the third-person movement a subtle Resident Evil type animation, where they're slightly leaned forward with their weapon held ready, as if they're trying to step quietly and listen out for danger. Which of course, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, it's something you'd certainly do. This next mod ticks a lot of boxes for me. It's from Fallout 76, so it's lore friendly, it covers a weapon category that's often neglected, and of course it's just well made. This Brotherhood of Steel rocket launcher is devastating, with optional barrels for napalm, cryo, and plasma damage. And some of the design can be customised as well. And honestly, there's not much to say. It's just a great new rocket launcher option that fits seamlessly into the world. Radiation has always been a key aspect of the Fallout games, but with the help of your Pip-Boy and some UI elements, it's pretty easy to avoid. But this Geiger counter mod adds an extra layer of depth, as the Pip-Boy one is now disabled and you have to craft one at the chem station. So there's the handheld counter, which makes it so you only hear the iconic radiation sound effect when you hold it in your hand, and the on-screen display is the only way to know how fatal it is. And then there's the belt fastened version, which will play the usual radiation sound as you get closer. But of course, without it in your hand, you can't quite see how lethal it is. It's the type of change I love, where general exploration now just feels a little more dangerous. You're no longer told the moment you're near danger, and finding out how close the radiation is comes with the risk of putting away your weapon. There's a huge amount of mods which tweak combat. In fact, there's another coming up in this video. But sometimes you don't want to install a bunch of individual mods covering AI, VATS, locational damage, and so on. You may just want one big overhaul, and Curse is one such overhaul mod. To keep things simple, I'll bullet point some key changes. You and NPC health no longer increases with every level, although bosses are given a bit more health. Raider AI is more aggressive and unpredictable, while gunners will flank and dodge more often. There's now a critical hit system, giving a 1% chance to critical hit per point of luck, and it increases to a 5% chance when in VATS. And speaking of VATS, VATS is now nerfed to be not quite as powerful, with time not being as slow, and you can now take full damage while it's activated. Powerful melee attacks can no longer be blocked, and the general usefulness of blocking is dependent on what weapon you're using. Headshots are more deadly, and damage taken to crippled limbs can be fatal and there's a bunch more changes to stuff like sneak, movement speed, and so on, so it's worth giving the Nexus page a read if you're interested. Now we move on to October mods, and we're returning to explosives with the Improvised Explosives Pack. It adds 15 new throwables that you can craft and find on enemies after level 5. As the name suggests, they all have an improvised handcrafted feel to them, 
like the Quantum Cocktail, which is like a radiation molotov, and the Unstable Fusion Core, which takes a Power Armor Fusion Core and turns it into a nuclear explosive. Perfect for a survivalist playthrough. So this mod author has released a ton of new combat mods this month, and they're all worth a look. But for the sake of this video, I'll focus on his most popular, Direct Hit. It makes damage dependent on the armor equipped to a specific body part. So let's say an enemy has metal armor equipped, it's usually a pretty good armor that provides plenty of damage resistance. But if they're not wearing a piece of metal armor on, say, their right leg, I could shoot it and deal full damage. And the same goes for yourself. Where now, NPCs can deal more damage if they target a more exposed part of your body. So it just adds an extra layer of depth, where now you want to target specific body parts, and you want to make sure your full body is protected. Want a new shotgun sticking to Fallout 4's aesthetic? This bullpup shotgun offers just that. It's one of those mods that fit well into any load order, adding some variety to the usual combat shotgun without going too wacky and out there. It comes with the level of customization you expect from a great weapon mod, and has some new animations on top. Just a mod that knows exactly what it is and does it well. Okay, so this is a much more niche mod compared to the rest, but I don't know, it just stood out to me. It simply adds some... Oh, sorry, I stopped stroking you for a second. I'm talking to my cat. As I was saying, uh, it simply adds some iguanas across the wasteland. That's it. Doesn't flood the Commonwealth with them. Just a new critter you'll stumble upon every now and then. And the reason I like it is the fact the game has iguana bits as a consumable item. Actually, many Fallout games do. Yet the actual creatures are nowhere to be found. So now you can find them, hunt them, and cook them up with a couple new recipes. Simple as. Oh, I'm sorry, I stopped stroking her again. New companion mods for Fallout 4 are nowhere near as frequent as in Skyrim, so it's always great when a new one comes along. This time it's Molly, a fully voiced companion with her own quest line and collectibles. Whew, I'm glad to be out of there. Thanks for helping me out. I suppose we should do introductions. Name's Molly. What stood out to me are the interactions with other NPCs, which make her feel like an actual part of the world, rather than a mindless follower. I'm looking for something light, uh, but versatile, for running and gunning. If you're looking to keep your load light, small semi-automatic with a good holster is what you're looking for. As for the voice, the acting is consistently great, with over 600 recorded lines of dialogue. Plus I'm usually quite sensitive to audio quality that's much lower than, you know, the base game that's recorded professionally. But here it just sounded natural, and so it all comes together to create the most polished and, I'd say, one of the best follower mods for Fallout 4. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like, it helps the channel grow. And a big old thank you to my Patreon supporters, Bishop Fox, Alex Campbell, Connor Peterson, Court Jester 1474, John Ratz, Tur Aura, Jaden Shaw, Jake Carlo, Dweezil P Pants, Rook, Alec Bentley, Jack Ma, and Christian Howell. I've been working my lame real life job like more hours this month because, you know, need the money. And so when I get home and exhausted, it's your contributions which help push me to focus on these videos and still, you know, give you the goods. So thank you so, so much. And uh, farewell everyone.